Okay, so today is Sunday, July 7th. And what we're looking at is my observation hive. And dead center here is a young queen that has done a fantastic job of creating great brood patterns. And she's laying eggs right now. So this entire video is just going to show this queen roaming around the frames and let, depositing her eggs and also the behavior of the worker bees around her. These are attending nurse bees that follow her everywhere she goes. And this gives me a chance to show you a very young queen. In fact, this year, my entire apiary has uh, swarmed and produced their own queens and replaced their queens and they've been superseded. So now every queen in my apiary is under a year old and they were produced this year, this summer. So what we're looking at, uh, I made a split and set up this observation hive again this spring and we established this on the 30th of May and uh, I had of course capped brood and everything in there and there were a bunch of queen cells. So you may have seen back around June 6th I had a video of the queens piping in their cells and I was wondering which of them would hatch out which queen would prevail and they come from weaver stock originally of course but because the queens have been replaced they did virgin flights here and we don't really know the uh, genetic history of these bees because this queen obviously she's dark the weaver queens that I get are normally blonde colored or golden and we can tell that this queen is young for a lot of reasons other than the fact that we knew that uh, there was no queen laying when I set up this observation hive so here we are uh, she hatched out around June 6th there were at least four visible queen cells and that means that this one won the battle she won the competition and uh, stung to death the others right through their cell walls and then the bees tore open those queen cells and removed and discarded the remains and took apart some of the queen cells although they seem to be keeping some of those cells handy they're about half size they're empty but i think they're ready to replace the queen anytime they feel they need to but i think this awesome looking queen look how long her body is she definitely is healthy she does show some signs that she might have been in a battle or two. She's got some nips on her wings. But how do we know that this is a brand new queen, other than the obvious? Uh, I set the hive up myself. I know the colony history. And uh, I was a little concerned because obviously we have no control and there's nothing but queen cells. We're counting on them to fly out, do mating flights. Sometimes they do more than one. And of course, when these queen cells hatched out, we had bad weather. It rained and had a nice discussion with our uh, beekeeping association president, who also was the state beekeeper association president in the past. Because I wondered, you know, how long does a queen bee have when she's a virgin and she hatches out? Because I could see her walking across the frames and she was obviously very skinny, very small and uh, not capable of laying. So she'd not been mated. And uh, in fact, her abdomen extended just a little beyond the length of her wings here. So if you look at the wings across her back now, they run about halfway down her abdomen. So she is obviously laying eggs. She's fertile and she's much larger. Here she's being fed by a worker and these attendants come up to her. That worker's tongue is folded back actually. And uh, several of these nurse bees will continue to attend and feed the queen. But back to the discussion here, she obviously had a battle with some of the other queens. She flew out. And my concern when talking to our beekeeping president was, how long do they have? 10 days, a week, five days? What if she doesn't get out and get mated? And now I have an infertile queen roaming around. Well, he says that uh, sometimes they fly up to two weeks. And I've also learned subsequently that a uh, queen that hasn't been mated within 20 days is pretty much finished. So they have much more time than you might think. Now, when we're looking at her calendar, we're trying to mark out and plan for when the colony is going to be in full production and when her bees are going to be hatching out and taking over. We're looking at, uh, you know, we try to plan it and we want to get down to specific days. Well, it doesn't always work like that. This queen took her sweet time doing her maiden flights. And then how many drones will she mate with? 
Well, you know what? That's all over the chart. She may mate with 10 drones, 11, 12, 15. Uh, the reports are all wide and varied, but I do know one thing. This queen is very fertile and she is loaded with eggs. I mean, she can mate with one drone and get more than a million fertile eggs. So, and each drone, of course, once they mate with her, they die. Now, when she flew out, we don't know the genetics. She flew out to a drone congregation area, which may even be several miles from where my apiary is. And then she mates with the fastest flying drones, the healthiest drones. So I'm hoping that those drones are maybe even from feral colonies around here that have survived winter. So I'll get that great combination of the Roa resistant hygienic stock that comes from the Weaver family. And then of course I have this queen who's a hybrid and she flew out and there are thunderstorms and uh, rain while I'm shooting this. So if you hear background noise, that's what's going on there. There she's uh, being groomed by some very nervous and fully attendant bees while she's laying that egg. But now what frame is she on? It, she started on, this is an eight frame and the frames are full depth, eight frame observation hive. And they're oriented in pairs, pairs directly above each other. So when you look at the face frames, you're looking at four full frames on one side, vertically stacked. And she started laying, of course, in the third frame down. And then just as it progresses in other hives in the colony, if you've got multiple boxes and she starts the spring out laying her eggs in one of the upper frames, upper boxes, as the season progresses, she fills those frames with eggs and they hatch out, they become larvae, then they become brood uh, that are capped at the end. And once they're capped, she moves on and starts filling uncapped cells, which is what she's doing here. So she continually moves down until now the bottom frame, a few weeks from now, will be uh, full of capped brood and she'll continue to lay eggs as the brood hatches out. The minute a baby bee hatches out of her cell and the others clean it out, a lot of people will say that that uh, hatched worker cleans her own cell, but it's been my experience looking at the observation hive here that when a uh, worker bee hatches out of her cell, she scoots out kind of silver blonde colored and they're all wet. They have lots of fuzz on them. Uh, the other nurse bees go right in and start cleaning her cell. So I haven't actually seen the uh, worker hatch out, turn around and clean her own cell, although that's the common thought line. And of course she's being fed again here. Remember, she has to consume massive resources because she's going to lay basically her weight in eggs every day. The question comes up all the time, how many eggs does she lay in a day? People will say 1,800, 1,600, 1,000. That is, of course, limited by the number of space, the open cells that she has to lay eggs in. A queen constantly searches and scours the cells on the frames to see if there are suitable cells for eggs to be put in. And this queen right here, she is awesome. When you look uh, near the end of this video, I will show you the full brood patterns that she's done in the frame above where she is in this sequence and it is impressive. She is laying eggs in every available cell. So if there are queens that lay 12, 1500 eggs a day, I would say that this gal right here is one of them. Now let's go over some other things. What if you didn't know the history of this queen? How do we know that she's a, a young queen? Well, first of all, look how fuzzy she is. Uh, there are moments in this video when she will press up against the glass with her thorax there and you can actually see all the hairs on that shiny thorax which is a big shiny black section right behind her head there look at all the fur on it queens that have been in lay for a long time rub that fur away when they are investigating cells to lay their eggs in so when she pokes her head in there and she looks around and she checks to see if it's suitable for egg laying uh, she is wearing away the fuzz on her thorax. The other thing is, look at her abdomen. That long segmented pointy section that she is now poking at these uh, frames while she does her inspection, that also has a lot of fuzz on it. And as she gets older, she's gonna wear that off because she is constantly wearing the fuzz off of her body when she inserts her abdomen into each cell to lay an egg. So she's got lots of fuzz on her. 
it's evident she is a young queen. Now when did she hatch? We know that today is July 7th. She actually hatched out June 6th. So she's doing really well. And uh, she did not go into lay right away. So I was a little concerned. In fact, I was ready to order a backup queen for this colony. Because the others all hatched too. That meant that you ran the risk of a lot of things going wrong. One being that the queens could fight. That all the queens would... Uh, defeat each other, that uh, maybe the worker bees would reject a queen that hatched out, maybe they'd fly out for a mating flight not come back. Look at the edges of her wings right here. You can see that she's been in some kind of conflict. So then the idea, you know, some people like to cut away all the other queen cells and bank on one good one. I don't do that. If there are four or five, six queen cells in there, I leave them all. And then I let them... Uh, decide on their own which of those queens is going to prevail and which is going to do her virgin flight and come back and then of course become the source of every egg that's going to be laid in that colony in the future and this is going to be fantastic based on what I'm seeing here look at the length of the queen I mean I'm pretty excited about it I don't know about you there are some queens that are really fat like the weaver queens that I receive they're not this long and uh, but they're really heavy bodied and this one is more long and slender and she really moves through the frames as we show here effortlessly just planting egg after egg pausing to be fed by these nurse bees and uh, of course how long is it going to be before we see baby bees coming out of these cells 21 days so we are behind what's going to go on in 21 days this colony is going to be overloaded with bees so they could actually swarm out again and uh, cause me some problems they could set themselves back but before they do that all the comb will be drawn out and uh, there'll be a huge population if they make new queens just before winter that's also fine with me apologies for being out of focus here a little bit again she's being fed look at them all constantly grooming her Remember the stock that uh, are around her now are not her own bees because they have not hatched yet. And uh, she didn't go straight into lay. She hatched on the 6th of June, but she wasn't laying for a good week after that. And I didn't see eggs until almost mid-June. So any eggs that she's laid have not yet uh, come all the way through their development and uh, hatched out. So we're not seeing her stock yet. So it's going to be interesting in the coming weeks. Uh, some of the brood is capped. Lots of brood is capped. So we are going to be seeing her uh, livestock coming off of her very soon in the next couple of weeks here. And we're going to see what the colony starts to shape up like and what their attitude is. So it's just a great opportunity to show this queen. I was fortunate that she stayed on the outside frames enough because remember, these frames are in pairs. She could just as easily be doing this. Uh, sandwiched in between frames and I wouldn't be able to share it with you. So it was exciting that she stayed on this frame so long that she filled every available cell and that I was able to make such a lengthy video and talk to you about queen bees. So we'll see how it goes through winter. Now this observation hive is in a bee shed that is sheltered from wind and of course the sun's heat and everything else. It is not insulated and it is not heated. Normally observation hives are put inside your house, so they're in a heated space and you have a tube that connects them to the outside and uh, they come and go when the weather's good and you just take care of them inside your house. I don't do that. My observation hive is basically just now an eight frame hive that sits in a shed that's sheltered from weather but gets exposed to all the same cold temperatures and hot temperatures and we have temperature gauges inside so I can see what the ranges are through the day and the night. And uh, we get to see how that progress. We do put insulation board on it on really cold days. I have two and a half inch rigid insulation board that covers this uh, plexiglass panel that we're looking through now. And uh, they are vented through the outside. There are four available vents on the inside, but uh, we plug most of those up when it cools off and we just have one vent inside and then the entry vent outside. And they actually get through winter pretty good. Although we changed everything out this year, we did have a die-off. 
uh, through the last winter. So these are, this is an entirely new colony established by doing a split with one of my very productive colonies that came through winter. And uh, they were in jeopardy of swarming, of course, early. So I pulled them apart back in May and uh, made this split and decided to restock the observation hive with their frames. There's a little bee sitting there venting, moving the air through. And the queen is, of course, just going about her business, depositing eggs left and right everywhere. And if you keep watching, I'll show you what the upper frames look like, and you can see what her brood pattern is. I could not be happier. Wish I knew more about the queen, but of course we will learn more. And the observation hive also allows us to see these bees very close. We can see if they have varroa on them. These are nurse bees. We can see the brood frames. That's where the varroa are most likely to appear. We can see that they have drone cells on the edges of the frames. And I expect this queen to carry them well through winter this year. And we have lots of resources, even though we've got rains, storms, it's raining today. We have a series of thunderstorms coming through. Uh, they are flying out in the rain. In fact, yesterday I posted a video showing, and look at the fuzz on her thorax right there. See it against the glass? This is a very fuzzy queen. She's new, she's young, she's fresh, and she is doing a great job. So I hope you're enjoying this. Um, watching your queens, having an observation hive, huge advantage. Uh, lets me see what's going on. I can see what their production is, if she's laying, if they have lots of resources, and they do. They've got pollen resources everywhere. They have, uh, let's see, two full frames of nectar, the top two frames, and they are drawing out comb on one of the upper frames outside edge. So they're making those combs deeper. In a previous video, I showed that they were working it up and now they are filling those with nectar already. So this is a very productive colony, super healthy. No evidence of small hive beetles, no evidence of um, wax moths and wax worms, of course. Although sometimes, even on a healthy colony, when you have an observation hive, you can see early stages of wax worms and they'll try to move through the comb, especially the bird comb that's attached to the glass. But as soon as those wax worms get large enough to start to show through the comb, the bees dispatch them and remove them. So right now, there are no pests inside this hive that we can see. And if, of course, we end up with uh, Varroa or something like that, we'll have to treat. So if you have questions about bees, comments about bees, the queen, uh, go ahead and write them down below. Feel free, of course, to subscribe as always. I am amazed to learn that uh, based on the analytics on this channel, 92% of my viewers are not subscribers. So that's funny to me because we have a little over 52,000 subscribers at the time that we're making this uh, video. But 92% uh, of my viewers, we get over 400,000 views a month every 28 days. So those are people just stopping by, I guess, but I would love it if more people subscribed. Now that we show the whole thing, look at how you could spot the queen here. She's moving along on the frames. She's very conspicuous, and of course we're lighting them up. Everything that uh, you're seeing here would normally be happening in total darkness. That's why there's so much touching going on. You see their antennae are touching the, the queen constantly. They're grooming to make sure that she's clean, that nothing's on her, there's no varroa. They're going to constantly attend to her and feed her. They follow her everywhere. And look at this brood pattern. Now this is above the frame that we were just looking at. But she has packed it solid. And this is the outside of two frames that are sandwiched together. The insides, we can only assume, are solid brood. The other side is also solid brood. We are going to get a busting out population of worker bees in this colony very soon. And then we're going to pan down and see when can you spot the queen. There she is, lower left. And of course, still egg laying. Here we are. 19, 20 minutes into this uh, observation and she is just going gangbusters, laying egg after egg after egg. I have timed some of my other queens prior to this one and they might lay an egg every 5, 10, 15 seconds. This queen uh, ramps up her speed sometimes and lays eggs every three or four seconds. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you got something out of it. Lots of fun to watch the queen and I expect great things from her. Have a great weekend.